Hi guys, it has come time again to sell um, a section of my miniature wargamers collection. Uh, to date, I've got a lot of stuff. I've got, um, I think, five Warhammer armies now. I've got the High Elves, Empire, Warriors of Chaos, Skaven, and Orcs and Goblins. Sold the Tomb Kings with 40k. Sold off my Eldar recently, but I've got uh, a full-on um, Imperial Guard army and Warriors of Chaos army. And of course, with uh, Privateer Press, I've got Circle Orbros, I've got Protector of Minos, and I think um, I'm going to be putting together a small um, Kador army, about 35 points, just so I can play the uh, the Vlad uh, characters, Epic Vlad and Prime Vlad. But um, obviously a lot of shelf space and I don't really play Warhammer anymore, so next up on the block will be the Warriors of Chaos army. Had a really good run with these guys, uh, it's, a, it's a really wonderful collection, and um, I think probably the most prominent thing in this army is the bases, which I picked up from Micro Arts Studio. The entire army is thematically based on these really really sort of exquisite uh, red skull bases, which of course you can paint uh, in other ways. And in fact, um, throughout these pictures you'll see that the, the paint on them isn't particularly caked on, it's nice and thin. You could always just spray coat this entire army with a different color and start from scratch, which would uh, be a, a perfectly reasonable way to go. So let's just talk you through it. Um, selling the Warriors of Chaos. So having a look at this uh, this photo here, that's um, how they first turned out. Obviously plastic and, uh, for example, this unit of Chaos Warriors with the double handed weapons have the metal attachments, which you can buy from Games Workshop, and the bases, that's how they turned out from uh, Micro Art Studio. Next photo you can sort of see um, putting together the Marauders and um, using the same sort of bases just in general. And uh, just status quo sort of stuff there, but the bases really make it uh, wonderful. A little bit of kit bashing with the, the models themselves, but nothing too drastic. Next photo, um, you know, a little bit of thought went into the painting. I tried a couple of other schemes. If you look on the left-hand side of this photo, you can see I tried the sort of uh, red base with the white skulls, and that looked maybe a little bit more realistic, but I ended up going with the, the red. I just liked it better. It was much more surreal, but there's no reason why you couldn't uh, actually just sort of dry brush some white over my uh, skull bases if you wanted uh, them to look a bit more uh, bony, and um, fair enough. Next image, uh, a bit of a better look at my, um, uh, probably my better painted unit uh, in the army, which is the Chaos Knights. Got a lot of mileage out of these guys. Uh, even with Cavalry 8th Edition, they are still really cool. I've got two units of these guys, so you can run them as a, a group of five or a group of ten. In some of my games, I used them in a, in a, in a medium-sized block of sort of six or seven. Great with the character. Um, obviously, you can give them Mark and Nurgle, Mark and Zinch, Mark and Korn with the banners. Um, Slanish isn't so useful nowadays, but... Um, Chaos Knights, just a really good uh, solid unit in the game. Next image, even on one of these knights I managed to do a little bit more, um, you know, freehand sort of rune work on them, and I started doing this on a couple of them, and it uh, just looks really impressive if you go in for some close-ups. Next photo, uh, obviously the hounds, I uh, didn't use the Micro Art Studio bases, but I flocked them and, and put them, put a few little bits of Tomb King uh, bits box stuff uh, in there as well, just to make them suit the rest of the army. I didn't really want to waste such good bases on, on some of the, the lesser important units, which generally are just fillers and, and diverters which go in the way. Next photo, um, just a bit of a look at uh, the Warriors of Chaos over the years in some of the games. Uh, obviously looking a lot better on the tabletop. With the sort of lighting you can actually sort of see what they look like in person a lot better. Quite impressive sort of stuff and you can see my very imposing uh, character on Juggernaut there. You wouldn't want to crack him out for too many games because he's not that effective uh, in sort of comp competitive play but he's a lot of fun and it's a great model to have. And on the other side of the unit you've got the um, the Battle Standard Barrel with Flail on the on the horse specially converted because I really like that build. Give in the chaos, uh, the the uh, exalted hero, the flail for strength seven on the charge, or which one well, not just the charge, the first round, and then uh, packing him out with a magic banner or just uh, some protective armor. Next photo, um, this is uh, how I did an Ark in tournament. You can sort of see the army on the field. And um, I've got a lot of Chaos Marauders there. And in this situation, I put them in a bus formation, five wide and ten back. And I use my chariot as a unit filler a lot of the time because I've actually only got 34 uh, Chaos Marauders ready to go, half with great weapons, half with um, hand weapon shields. So you can sort of run the unit either way. Some people like sort of Zinch with the shield for the five plus uh, parry save. Other people like the sort of corn to attacks with the great weapons with a step up, which is a great way to play them. Um, but you've got the diversity there, which is one really cool thing about this army. And of course, a couple of um, uh, sort of characters on foot. You've got the um, Chaos Exalted Hero with the great weapon and uh, just a, a general sorcerer, which you'd often play in, in lists like these. 
Next photo, um, I also uh, put the army together in uh, the Battle of Morsleib. If you guys are into Warhammer and 8th edition and you haven't checked out this battle report, just um, type into the YouTube search engine um, Battle, uh, sorry, Gift of Gift of Morsleib, um, and this will come up, and it's basically a very long sort of series that I did on a massive 15,000 point game between Warriors of Chaos and Skaven, and of course my um, Chaos uh, Warriors army featured in it. You're welcome to go back and have a look uh, and check that out, because it was a really, really awesome event. Next photo uh, shows you just another view of the, um, the, the the Juggernaut Lord who appeared in this game fighting off a, um, a Vermin Lord and some other friends and he did quite well which is quite funny. Uh, so next photo, um, just going to have a look at the sort of the most recent photos I took today and this is what you get if you bid on the army. So there's an overview picture There's uh, and have a look at the video description for the inventory. Block of 12 Chaos Warriors with full command Hellbirds, block of 12 Chaos Warriors with great weapons, uh, character on Juggernaut, uh, three characters on horse plus another character with uh, Battle Standard Bearer on horse and a fifth character who's clearly a, a wizard uh, with the big sort of uh, lasso whip uh, fireball effect which is quite cool, Demon Prince and two Chaos characters on foot, uh, possibly a combat character and uh, sorcery character. Two units of Chaos Knights, both with standards, and unit of 34 um, Chaos Marauders on foot. You'd always want to use those guys, they're just fantastic. Two units of um, uh, Light Cav with Javelins and Shields. Usually I play them with Javelins, although you could also play them with Flails, just pretend they've got Flails there. You can even put them together in your Amulus with Javelins, Shields, and Flails, which give them a lot of um, you know, versatility without really having to spend too many points. I've got two units of Warhounds and two Chariots. Uh, on one of the Chariots you can actually pull the um, the riders off because they're not glued on and use it as a war shrine. You'd be welcome to obviously um, you know, convert it and put extra stuff onto the, the back of the Chariot just to make it look more like a war shrine. Next photo, here's a look at the conversion I did for my uh, mage on, this, on the horse. A lot of the time you'd want to play your mage on foot instead, but if you want to play him on the horse, this is a great miniature to have. It, it looks like he's casting you know, a fireball or infernal gateway or whatever you want, you know, flicking fire at each, and uh, just a really, really cool model. Um, that's actually a coat hanger inside that effect with green stuff around it, um, which I painted over in a sort of, a, sort of an interesting fashion, so it looks very fiery. Next image, just more of a close-up on these uh, Chaos Warriors. You can really see the, the bases popping out here. I, over the years, I actually went went over and actually did a little bit of a, um, a, a light brush over them with a mix of red and yellow and, uh, and white and um, created a little bit more of a glowing effect. Next image, there's the, um, the Chaos guy on the Juggernaut. He's got very dusty from not being uh, used very often, but you just need to wipe it off a bit and he's still looking good as new. Um, probably could do a bit more color and highlight on him if you want. Next photo, here's the Chaos Warriors with Hellbirds. There's no reason why you can't actually put these two Chaos Warrior units together and have a big unit of, I don't know, 24, uh, which is quite cool, and they'll they'll just kill anything. I mean, anything they touch, and it's a great sort of point sink that your opponent's not really going to get, especially if you give them the Steadfast Banner. Next image, um, Chaos Exalted Hero on horseback. He's got uh, one of the Marauder heads, so I thought it was quite cool, and a bit of conversion on his flail, but generally just a Chaos Knight there, and um, he's, got this, he's got this banner there, so that's quite awesome. And um, some other, other dudes cracking there in the background. These two um, guys to the left of him are in the game zone uh, range, which are really awesome models, but they're, they're quite small in terms of the scale. Next image, uh, also the uh, classic uh, Chaos uh, Exalted guy who's meant to go on a demonic mount. You can play that as a demonic mount, but it's meant to have a 40mm by 40mm base. I've just put it on a regular horse base because I like using him as a, a hero which can attach into your cavalry units without being pelted by a, a war machine. And of course, the really, really classic out-of-production Demon Prince. Uh, quite a lot of fun to run that guy. He's a very unique model these days. Next image, of course, you've got the two guys on foot as well as the Chaos Warrior, sorry, the Chaos uh, Knights unit looking very good there. Um, you probably want to sort of place them on the base in that particular order, otherwise they, they're, they're too spiky and they won't sort of line up together properly. But if you, if you pick that exact selection, they actually fit together quite nicely. Next image, 10 Chaos Warhounds. You can use them as a group of 10 or as two groups of five. I recommend two groups of five. Two chariots, which, you know, if you like chariots, great. Put mark a corner on them. Or you can probably use them as war shrines or even as a unit filler inside a massive block of marauders, and they're great for that. Oh, by the way, guys, whoever bids for this army and wins it obviously will also um, get my Warriors of Chaos army book. So if you, if you bid for this army, you get that book as well. Great little edition. Saves you having to go out and buy it, and it's obviously still current. It works for 8th edition, no problem. 
Next image, the uh, the Marauders. Um, I've actually uh, categorised these guys quite nicely. So you've got one unit with all sort of no helmets and a unit of five with helmets on them. So you can tell them apart. But uh, you can actually play these guys as a group of ten and put um, put a, a mage in them as well, which is quite interesting because I think if the mage is just riding a cow steed, I'm not sure if you can that. No, you can't. Okay, forget that. You don't get the light cavalry movement, but um, it does allow you to have a mage in a unit without, uh, we're still getting the lookout sir bonus. It can be quite interesting. Next image, uh, the Chaos Mortars really love this unit. Um, obviously, if you'd like to highlight them a little bit further, you're welcome to, but um, they've got that sort of brown skin theme and all red bases, just wonderful stuff, and the, the metallic uh, color on them, 10 bits, with a bit of a mix of um, uh, bolt gun metal in some cases. So next photo is a bit more of a, a close-up on them. You can sort of see how they look. Um, a lot of dry brushing going on, but they, they look really good in the battlefield, and they've got a great, a great presence there. Next image, uh, the Chaos Knight unit with uh, Halberds, sorry, Lancers. You really just play them with ensorcered weapons. I just put the Lancers there uh, just to give them a bit of differentiation and actually use the sculpts because I really like the Lance sculpts. So you can obviously add them to the other unit, no problem, or mix and match. And uh, next photo, this is obviously what your army is going to look like when you are standing on the table behind it. It looks pretty cool. And a lot of fun to play, really just rushing forward, using a lot of Mark and Corn, or obviously the spells from um, Law of Cinch is a general staple. Uh, Law of Heaven is a really fun one, especially for friendly games. Creates a really different uh, feel to the army, and the army plays in a different way when you've got Law of Heavens, for sure. And there's no reason why you can't play with a little bit of Law of Fire and Death in there as well. Um, or anything else for that matter, but those are my favourites. Uh, so that's it guys, um, I'm going to ask you guys to, to post your comments on the YouTube page, just place a bid if you'd like to um, own the Sami, starting off at around about $500 NZD, so that's New Zealand dollars, I want to you know, sell it for at least $500, it's probably worth closer to 1000 if you went out and bought these the, these plastics and bought the, the bases from Microite Studio, definitely be paying you know close to that, and there's a lot to it there, everything's already all painted to tournament standard level, uh, you don't have to touch it, but obviously it's it's also got a lot of room for improvement. So if you like the person who if you're the person who likes refurbishing projects, that's going to be a fantastic one as well. So really great value army here, guys. Uh, at least five hundred dollars worth, uh, which I will accept. Um, if you'd like a tracking number for me to send it overseas, that's probably going to cost you an extra fifty or sixty bucks on top of it. But all of the other armies that I've sold and sent overseas have arrived uh, safely to their uh, purchases and I've sold a couple of my own am armies on online and sold a couple of armies for my friends as well it's all worked out so um, get in touch um, you know check your piggy banks by the way if you're really keen on buying my Skaven army you might want to save your money because I'll be auctioning them off in the next couple of weeks but um, if you're more of a warriors of chaos man or woman whoever you're going to be playing um, you know give me a bid and uh, pick it up because only one person's going to get to own this thing catch you guys later